Hello, and welcome to a new lecture in Kentera. In this lecture, we will focus on the counterflow diffusion flame. And this is actually the final lecture of the entire course. Before we jump into the counterflow diffusion flame and uh, how it is modeled in Kentera, uh, there's a, a small um, point that I would like to focus on first. Um, from the, from the pre past lecture, from the last lecture actually, I forgot to mention one important function. Um, and that function is, so if you remember in the previous lecture, we uh, looked at a function called set refined criteria. And we can, can set the ratio and we can set the slope, et cetera. There is a function um, also that is sometimes used, uh, although rarely I would say, but uh, sometimes it can be of use. It's called get refine criteria. So the, all that it does is just to um, show you what the refinement criteria was set for the particular problem. Um, so the way it is used is just uh, use the flame object. So f dot get refine criteria. And that is what it will. So if you remember in the, in the last, uh, a problem that we were doing on the console, um, we had specified these numbers for all these parameters, and that is exactly what get refined criteria shows us here. Well, with that, let's uh, go on to uh, counterflow diffusion flames. Um, I, I, I think most of you should be aware of what counterflow diffusion flame is. For uh, some of those who aren't, let me uh, pull up a picture uh, of a counterflow diffusion flame and explain the configuration. This is how a counterflow diffusion flame looks. Um, at the very name, counterflow signifies that there is some kind of opposite flow going on. And that is what you see here with fuel and oxidizer. The so fuel and oxidizer come in from opposite directions and then meet somewhere in the middle. Wherever they meet in the, in the stoichiometric ratio, that is where you have the flame front setup that you see uh, on the screen here. That is a counterflow diffusion flame. So instead of a regular diffusion, in a regular diffusion flame, you have uh, fuel and oxidizer separate, but they come in from the same direction. Um, it can be through a coaxial pipe um, or uh, through two different um, pipes. However, uh, in a counterflow diffusion flame, that configuration is just reversed. And so instead of same direction, they, the oxidizer and fuel come in from a from the different direction. And you can also see the picture of uh, the actual burner. This looks very different from a regular burner. And so you have fuel coming in from the uh, burner part below and then oxidizer coming in from the burner part above. Um, this picture actually I, I took from one of the papers uh, from Combustion and Flame. Um, and with that, let me jump into Spider now. Um, I've already written a Python script in Kentera. And this Python script um, it simulates a counterflow diffusion flame. Uh, most, of, most of this entire script is similar to what we've already written for the free flame, but there are some differences and, and they're very, very important. Uh, and I will point them out as we go through this script line by line. So if we start, so starting from line number eight, which is the first line in the script, it's the same thing, import Cantera is CT and matplotlib.py plot as PLT, that is for plotting function. Then what you see here are some new variables that I've set and how these variables are used, we will come to know in, um, in the following um, lines of the code. So the first one is I've set 300 for TF, then TO is 300 again. Um, m dot o that is 0.7 m dot f is 0.3 now these are the first two are temperatures they are in kelvin and the third and the fourth these are mass flow rates so they are in kgs per meter square per second and i, I will put this entire script um in the um, in in the uh, description for the video uh, a link to the script that is um, and i have sufficiently uh, commented out this uh, script as well. So you see several comments in here uh, wherever I felt there was a need. 
And so next co coming uh, to the to line number 16, you see there is comp O that is again a generic variable. You can name these variables whatever you like. These are not related to Kentera in any way. So you could, uh, instead of comp O, you could just write say P underscore O or comp underscore F would be P underscore F or whatever you may feel like. But anyway, so comp O holds this uh, string. Uh, o2.21 and 2.78 AR.01 and comp F, comp underscore F, holds the string C2 at six colon one. This you will see later on will form the oxidizer composition. And this one here will later on form the oh, oops, um, fuel composition. All right, so then again, we uh, start with declaring the um, solutions, uh, I mean, an object with a solution class, and then setting up the temperature and pressure for the gas, that is 301 atmosphere. Here, uh, the entire grid size, uh, the domain size rather, has been set at 20 millimeters or 0 0.02 meters. Then, this is how, so remember in the previous um, script, we described or we uh, rather declared the flame object as F equals CT dot free flame. This time, since we are modeling the counter flow diffusion flame, all we have to do is just replace it with this term counter flow diffusion flame. That's it. Uh, the declaration will be exactly the same. You provide the, the, the gas um, and you provide the entire domain of, um, of, of uh, a grid. So that's there. And <clears throat> next, this is where from starting from line number 29, this is where some differences arise. And, and we will see what this is. So in line number 29, I've written f dot fuel underscore inlet dot m dot. This is a command for from Cantera. So what this does is since the counterflow diffusion flame has two different inlets, one for fuel and one for oxi oxidizer. And that is why we will have to specify the inlet conditions for both of these inlets separately one for fuel and one for oxidizer. And that is what we've done here. So we've specified the fuel inlet mass flow rate as m dot underscore f, which will be taken from line number 14. And this will become 0.3 kgs per meter square per second. Then after that, we define the uh, composition of the fuel, inlet fuel. That is comp underscore f, which is pure ethane. So this pure ethane will become the fuel. So notice we here we have not used uh, the set equivalence ratio function. That is because there is no equivalence ratio to set. I mean, there is pure oxidizer coming in from one side and pure uh, fuel coming in for the, from the other side. So um, there is basically no premixed uh, equivalence ratio that we can set. And so all we've done here is uh, we've set 100% uh, ethane as the fuel. Then line number 31, we've just set 300 Kelvin, which is from line number 11, 300 Kelvin as the inlet temperature for the fuel. The same thing goes on for oxidizer as well. So we specify a mass flow rate for oxidizer, which uh, I've um, taken as 0.7 kgs per meter square per second. And similarly, uh, the composition becomes that of air. So here I've added some argon as well, just for demonstration. Uh, although it does not really change uh, anything at all. Um, and then finally, 300 Kelvin um, input temperature for um, for uh, oxidizer also. So once the inlet conditions have been set, now the only thing remains is just to solve because as you know, everything in uh, flames is solved by Kentera um, internally. So once you supply inlet conditions, then you just have to solve the equations. And so we uh, do set the refining criteria, which uh, here as also I've used the same exact values that I, that I used in the uh, last lecture. And then finally, again, we just supply the um, command f dot solve. That's it. Remaining these lines are just to create some plots that we will see when I run the code. So as soon as I run the run this program, um, you will see that Cantera will start to generate some output here. So as it is going through uh, the equation that is, uh, as it is solving them, it is generating some output because we have specified a log level of one in line number 43. 
And that generates some meaningful output so that we know what is Kentera doing and, and, and where is it at. So here, if you see, this is the plot it has uh, generated because of these uh, creating plots uh, lines. So on the x-axis, you have the grid, which is a total of 20 millimeters. On the y-axis, I've plotted mole fractions. So at the inlet, which is zero millimeter, uh, this is the inlet of fuel, 20 millimeter is the inlet for oxidizer, right? So this is very different from the previous flame that we saw, the, the previous lecture where we saw the free flame. So the, at the fuel inlet, the fuel mass fraction starts from 100%. And then as we go further towards the oxidizer side and dilution of fuel starts to happen, that is when you see a drop in the fuel, um, uh, fuel mole fraction. Somewhere here, close to 7.5 millimeters, about, yeah, about 7.5 or 7.4 millimeters, this is where oxygen and, um, or rather air and, um, and uh, fuel come and meet in the stoichiometric fashion. And this is where the flame front is formed. And uh, right after that, I mean, right at that location, the reaction happens. And once the reaction is done, you see the oxygen, uh, or sorry, the, the, the fuel uh, mole fraction go down to zero and the oxidizer mole fraction also go down to zero because all of it has been consumed. So this is what, um, this is how you can simulate uh, a counterflow diffusion flame in Kentera. Now, uh, I mean, a couple of things. Uh, so the, the mass flow rate in 913 and 14, this actually decides where the flame front will lie, right? Because that is, that is what decides uh, how, do, how do the uh, oxidizer and the fuel basically mix. Uh, you can also do some experiments. You can maybe just, uh, just flip them. So for example, I can have uh, oxidizer um, or rather just, just change them slightly. So point instead of 0.3, let's have a small um, value for the fuel, so 0.1. And now let me just run this again. So you see the whole thing will run um, and uh, some outputs will be generated by Kentera. On, in, the, uh, in the console. And once it is done running, we will again have the same plot generated, but this should look slightly different, see? So now that it is done, this was the previous plot where the flame front uh, was close to 7.5 millimeters. And now that we have decreased the mass coming from the oxidizer side, now see the uh, flame actually sits much closer to the oxidizer. Uh, much sorry since we have reduced the mass flow rate from the fuel side from 0.3 to, to 0.1 meter kgs per meter square per second the flame actually moves towards the fuel side all right and it sits somewhere around 3.5 millimeters from the fuel side injector so that was uh, that is exactly how you uh, simulate counterflow diffusion flame, not, not, not too different and not too difficult either. Um, it's hardly any line of code. It's uh, maybe you could say a, a standard or a free or a burner stabilized flame, uh, about five or six lines of code, counterflow uh, diffusion flame, maybe a, just add some five, six lines more uh, because you have to specify the mass flow rate and composition, et cetera. So uh, that is it. Um, it's really easy to simulate uh, flames in Kentera, and I do encourage you to uh, go through the documentation that uh, we've seen uh, on the Kentera website, and that will guide you a lot in how to simulate other types of flames as well. So with this, we actually come to the end of the course. Um, I hope this was uh, of some use to you, and I was able to give you some basics and um, equip you with certain amount of knowledge that uh, you can use to build up some uh, initial level programs and um, also go on to learn some advanced concepts in Kentera. Uh, this was mainly just the foundational part. So I wish you all the best and thank you.